Stretching watercolor paper. Why do we stretch watercolor paper? It depends on how much of the wet into wet technique you're going to work with. Most watercolor paper comes in weights ranging from 140 pound to 300 pound. You have lesser weights starting around 90 pound. Now, 90 pound or 140 pound refers to the weight of paper in reams of 500, and the more modern equivalent would be grams per square meter. So, for example, 140 pound paper is about 300 grams per square meter. Now, the paper itself is quite heavy and quite thick. This one here that I have is 140 pound paper, and you can see it's quite thick. And it's probably the most popular of the three types of paper you get in watercolour. You've essentially got what's called hot press, which is quite a smooth, hard paper for detail. You have then what's called knot, as in not hot pressed, which conveys a little bit more um, unevenness on the surface. You've got a little bit more teeth on the surface. You've got the peaks and valleys for a little bit more textured work, but not too excessive. And then you have the rough, which is a much more excessively rough paper used for very dramatic um, textured and pasta type styles in terms of either using regular paints or actual watercolours themselves. Now, with the watercolour paper, the problem is that if you don't stretch it previously before using a lot of wet into wet technique, what happens then is when water is first applied in a large amount, it starts to buckle and cockle. And that means then that the various different colours you apply roll down into these valleys, which in itself can ruin a painting. So you're always better with any paper less than 300 GSM to stretch it beforehand. Even if you're not intending to do a lot into wet and wet, considering that the watercolours can oftentimes go off in a different tangent, it's still a good idea. Anything over 300 gram doesn't really need it quite as much, but I'd be still inclined to do it for very cheap, everything except watercolour board. Now, what we're going to do, it's a very simple technique, you can either get a basin of water and you can take a watercolour sheet like this and you can sit it in the basin of water for a few minutes after the heavier weights, maybe for 10 or 15 minutes, let it absorb completely the water, take it out and just drip off excess water and put it down. But in this case, what we're going to do first off is, for this you must use gum tape. Using regular masking tape is no good because when you damp this, it has to expand and it expands outwards. The problem is that if you use something like masking tape, which is a dry glue tape, it doesn't allow the watercolour paper to stretch outwards, so it has to stretch upwards. So it won't stretch it in, in a flat fashion, it'll end up being rounded. Whereas because this is wet, it means that it's giving it the opportunity to dry at the same time. So I'm going to just tear off a few, few strips with both of those, the two short ones. Now, I have my jar of water, I have my large wash brush, so all I'm going to do is, with quite a lot of water, soak the paper. All the way through, and I'm going to do this on both sides. Just a good wetting. Don't be afraid to put lots and lots of water on it. The paper will not be damaged. You could leave this paper sitting, as I said, in a bucket of water overnight, and you still take it out, it'll dry flat. It's not going to be damaged. It's very hard wearing, particularly the sort of machine paper that we buy more so than the handmade paper. I'm going to just turn that over and do exactly the same on the other side. You can see that side is already very wet, and you can see the way it's beginning to twist. And I just do precisely the same on this side, giving a good soaking in with plenty of water. Now I'm going to leave that there for one moment. I'm back in, I'm going to take my tissue, dry off my brush, and just very quickly run over, take off the excessive amount of water, turn it back onto this side, line it up. Now, when you're dealing with watercolour paper, it's very susceptible even to the smallest amount of grease or something like that on your hands, so it's always a very good idea when you're dealing with it to make sure your hands are very clean because otherwise, even though you wouldn't see it, the grease would go down on the paper, and then it's only when you go to paint it that this little thumbprint or mark is going to show up. While that's there, I'm going to take my strips of gum tape paper. I'm going to start with the first one and just damp it with a cloth. Just wet that. And starting with the long sides, I'm going to just put that down, covering the paper itself quite well to about half an inch, thereabouts. Just flatten that out. Repeat that on the other long side first. So doing the two long sides and then the two short sides. And then our two short sides. Now, if you had that soaking in a bath or in a tub of water, what I would do is I would take it out and just give it a little shake off to make sure the excessive amount of water is taken out of it. And then finally the last side. This area here. 
flatten that out. And just make sure that there's good adhesion all the way around. Make sure the edges are well flat. And even if that were to start to buckle and cockle now, don't worry about it. Even in the drying process, if you see it start to warp, don't be concerned. If you leave that long enough, and by long enough, I mean maybe overnight, or at least um, 12 hours or so, it will dry out perfectly flat and perfectly round. And what it means is that even when you stretch watercolour paper, it doesn't mean to say that it won't buckle and cockle next time around, but it'll certainly buckle and cockle a lot less than it would had you not stretched it. So it'll take an awful lot more water than it would first time around because you're allowing for that stretch already to take place. We leave that to dry, and at that, you're ready then to attack it with your watercolours.